Aloha and welcome to Wisdom Dialogues with Hope Johnson. Coming to you from Hawaiian Paradise Park on the beautiful big island of Hawaii. Ah, oh, hooray, hooray. We seem to be opening up more and more to this is a dream. You know, I heard many years ago, um, you know, I heard from Abraham Hicks, they said, if you will just hit that this is an emotional journey, you'll have such a good time and release all kinds of stress. And I'm like, hmm, what does that mean? You know, when I first heard that, I was like, emotional. Because we're, we learn to just deny our emotions and focus on a life that seems to be um, happening. And really that life is projected from the same place that's projecting the emotion. And really there's only two emotions, love and fear. You can say love is your real emotion. <laughs> and then fear is, uh, is an effect of believing against what's true. So it's an effect of believing against love. So anything that's less than gratitude Dude, is fear okay because if you're seeing clearly there's going to be only gratitude for whatever it is now that's not the same the same as saying you should be grateful that's not it at all this is awareness remember the action is in the observation so this is an awareness of when you're not grateful noticing that you're wrong you must be wrong i mean reason will tell you that you're wrong because you're created in love you don't have thoughts that are less than grateful those aren't your thoughts and that's why they can be released right away as soon as you see them and notice that they're not your thoughts and you don't want them <laughs> it's not like you're mad at them or you're pushing them away you're just noticing that you wouldn't keep them if you knew you have a choice. And in that you seeing, you're seeing that you do have a choice. You're seeing that you are choosing against yourself. And, you know, you can say that all of us have these layers of choosing against ourselves. Because <laughs> there's been choosing against ourselves repeatedly. In fact, when we made the world, we put so much energy into it. You know, it was so much work effort it's not nearly as that much effort the releasing because we don't have to take on anything all we have to do is unlearn what we've already learned and we unlearn through experience so in being able to embrace or another word is embody um, the emotional frequencies that are coming through it's going to allow um, communication to occur you know, that's going to allow it, allow you to um, be expressed, let's say. And basically, you'll be expressed in as much as you're willing to be expressed. It's like it, we have all these resistances to um, being seen a certain way or acting out a certain way, um, like a fear of other people's reactions. You know, that's one that comes up for me, too. It's like, um, when someone seems like they're angry with me or disgusted with me or something like that, I notice I'm reacting to that, you know? So in that, it's like, it, it's like a, a sense of, uh, gratitude for the experience and also embracing that energy of reaction to someone thinking, you know, you having a perception of someone thinking something about you. So here, here's the thing, you're never right about that. Like you're never right about what it, they're going through. When you're having a perception of someone thinking something about you, that's not about you at all. That's not even about you. And that's the thing that's, that, that hooks me. I thought like, what's a hook for me? Um, Cause I won't notice immediately sometimes that that's not about me. 
you know, it's not it, it, but it's like when you're aware and you're watching, you're seeing it over and over again, and eventually you break the habit. So in being gentle with everything that you perceive in watching the, you know, you're getting a, such an education, just watching yourself play out. So, you know, gratitude for that. That's why, you know, I had one uh, episode a few back. I kept on saying, hey, it's okay. I'm a fucking idiot. And I love that about myself. This fucking idiot is for teaching me. This is not me. I made it. That, that's why it's an idiot, because I made it up. <laughs> so if I act stupid or act like an idiot or something like that, that's also a perception and an energy to be embraced. Ah, I'm so grateful. I can, it helps me every time I have any perception. <laughs> so every, 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 uh, every perception is helpful. Um, Bob Shine asked me what happened to Facebook. I don't know. What happened to Facebook? Is something happened there? Did I not go live? Is that what you're saying? I think I'm live over there, but I could be wrong. It looks like I am. <laughs> uh. So it's not like you're trying not to re react. And we can make it, we can make illusions even with our physiology. If we're trying not to react, we can get the perception that we're not reacting, but someone outside of us is reacting to us. And then there's a sense that that uh, person who's reacting to us is separate. And you know, really there's wanting to make them separate so that you don't see that you're reacting. And, and that's how it is with the perception. It's just, well, uh, spit the actors. If you're not willing to perceive that you're reacting, it'll spit the reacting people right outside of you. They'll just reacting up. And what about, oh, these people are just reacting everywhere. <laughs> Look at me, I'm so calm. <laughs> All right. It's like, uh, the calmness comes from willingness to see that it's all coming from you. I mean, man, when you're embracing your experience like that, just with willingness to see that it's all coming from you. You might have moments where you don't see that it's coming from you. You might even react in that moment, but then as soon as you see it's all coming from you, all of that's erased. <laughs> it's not anything. It's not like, oh, why did I fuck up? It's still, even that's coming from you. <laughs> the whole world is a stage and we are actors that strut upon it. Yeah, you could say that we're an act, we're all actors for consciousness. Like we're being played out, we're being played. One friend asked me, how do you stay in the truth? And I'm like, you choose it, even when it doesn't look like you're choosing it. <laughs> it doesn't seem like you're choosing it, you're still choosing it. That's what it is. See, it doesn't matter what kind of perception that you have of yourself or anything. You're just willing to choose the truth again and again. And that's how you stay in the truth until eventually that's permanent. And then when that's permanent, you don't have any impurities in your mind. It's not possible to perceive a separate world either. And that's so fun. Nor can anyone perceive you. Okay. That's why when you ascend is one word to say it, um, it's kind of a funny word because it doesn't mean go up. I don't know. To me, it does. It might not even mean that. But um, whatever that is, uh, enlightenment, total purification, whatever. 
um, you know, what in the moment that occurs, there's no more separation. So you're not getting like a perception that there's other people still dreaming. You're just with everyone. <laughs> Because this isn't even happening. It's not like that. See, and there's no, there's, there's actually uh, the dreaming is uh, is a, a very powerful creative mind having projected, extrapolated out a thought of separation. Okay, so and and the, and so there's a sense that we're going through all of these things, and you know it'll keep extrapolating because it is a powerful, powerful mind. As long as we are teaching the mind that we want separation, it continues to extrapolate out, which means making up stories in time. So kind of like extending out time and lifetimes. So that we can keep on playing out our fantasies, our separate fantasies. See? So to collapse that time making mechanism takes the mind learning that we don't want this anymore. We checked it out and we realized that it wasn't for us. And then it's just a kind of like a no thank you. I'm not playing that energy anymore. You may find yourself calling it out. Nothing is nothing is the correct or right or wrong thing to do. So that makes it really simple. That's why I say you might find yourself calling it out. You don't have a choice in it. But when you open up to what is this, instead of just leaning to your own understanding again about what this is and what it means. The mind makes up fantasies about what it means. It's nothing. And it's made into something when it's not seen as nothing. See, when you're playing out patterns and you're not seeing that it's nothing, it's just a pattern, which is nothing. It's also projected. Those don't have any power. You teach your mind and you also learn for yourself that you don't want the patterns. And I don't know. I have experienced so many of my friends coming around noticing being uh, ecstatically joyful about what they're finding and you know some in a stage in a stage of fear too like holy shit what use is any of this what you it's depressing you know to the ego that's depressing none of this means anything that's totally depressing and what's going to happen if none of this means anything? Are we just going to go around killing each other? Right? <laughs> is everyone going to just if if nothing means anything, is everyone just going to start taking advantage of each other and be mean to each other? You know, thoughts of fear and worry, they're all the same. Let's put them all in the same camp. They're from the same camp. <laughs> it doesn't matter what it's about. Thoughts like that, it's all from the ego. You know, you just keep on focusing on this is a dream. This is a dream. That's all. I'm making this. I'm projecting this. However, you need to look at it to keep on leaning into that. And you'll see that it's a joy for you. It's a joy. It's a re it's it's a refreshing, uh, relieving that this isn't real because now you have a choice. If you want to keep making it as it as you made it already, oh my goodness, as you taught your mind already, if it, or if you would prefer something else, and if you prefer something else, you don't know, need to know what it is. You really don't know what your reality is from this perception. You don't know it, but just knowing and you're recognizing what you don't want, you can be grateful. Seeing how gratitude comes back in that you have that choice to make. 
Because it seems like the, to the ego, it seems like you don't have that choice. Like something would have to change in the world. Like pe other people's minds would need to change before you could be okay. Maybe the government needs to change hands before you're okay. Hey, Anne, would you like go ask Tony to take, yeah, take care of that? That's like right there. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. <sighs> Those guys are going to get moved around. They're super close to me today. <laughs> Either Anne's, it looks like Anne's going to move them. She's going to run after them right now. <laughs> Birds in paradise. <laughs> I think they went to the other side now. Yes. So we connect through. Thank you, Anne. We connect through authenticity. So watch that sense of wanting to be stoic. That's the ego. That means that there's a kind of like a shielding or a guarding or not wanting to let people see or know how you feel. Now, many times you guys will be talking about something. Some words will be coming out of your mouth of some story or something. Notice sometimes that'll show you an upset feeling. Just in being aware, being alert to that for yourself. You know, I just started being alert to stuff when I was pretty young. You know, I just noticed some kind of weird, interesting, energy arise like it's not full a fully loving energy so in watching that i can see how i'm playing into it and in noticing that that kind of player that kind of energy over and over again you can kind of like see past it you know and it's weird things get a little bit sticky for me sometimes because i know that no one does anything right I know that no one does anything, but then I'll find myself complimenting someone like, wow, you can, you can do that, you know, <laughs> and it'll feel, it'll feel strange to me, you know, like it'll feel like a, a, a trippy energy. And I'm like, oh, and, you know, just like noticing there is a pattern right there where it's playing into that energy. That doesn't mean I'm trying to manage my words or stop giving anyone compliments like that or anything like that but I'm just noticing it's all these little things over and over again that prop up this world. So it's all these little, little energies and patterns that we play over and over again. So it's like in the moment when I was expressing that, there was belief that she's actually capable of doing something. And that means so am I. And that's why that feels weird to me. It feels weird to me to say that I miss something. It feels because it's not true. I know it's not true. So I noticed that it felt weird to me a while ago. Um, and I just like, didn't find myself saying that anymore. You know, it occurred one time in my mind after um, my place went under the lava, it occurred to me, I miss fairyland. That was one time I saw it and I just saw it so clearly because the word miss was in the sentence probably, but I so saw it so clearly that there was no way I was going to pursue it. That I just was like, it was really tempting to pursue because it was like this, this, it was a feeling that felt, uh, it's like a, this feeling that makes you feel alive too, you know, this feeling like you miss something. So it's like the, this, uh, uh, this temptation to travel down a path of missing in your mind. And what that does is attacks your body which is completely non-existent. It doesn't mean anything, 
but it attacks the image that you made. So it turns up as pain, for instance, in the body tension. It turns up at the, as, as that, and it makes patterns. Um, so all of this kind of stuff, like when you just um, say it with belief, you know, and it is with belief if it just comes out, you know, that's like Jesus said, out, out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. So that's how you could see, you could see it. You notice that, you, you know, this, this uh, pattern comes out to say, oh, wow, you, kn you know how to do that. Like, that's really impressive that you know how to do that. That right there is, a, it, it's a, it's a projection of a thought that defiles you. That's why I feel interesting. It's like, whoa, because it actually attacks my body, you can say. Um, and, you know, again, attacking the body means it's a mental attack and the body is a mental form. Okay. It's a, it's a name. It's got a name and it's got a form. And the mind attacks that name and form. Okay, that's how it is. Whenever there's pursuing ego thoughts, and this happens all the time. So you're noticing how things feel. And in the noticing how things feel, your habits are going to change over time. And, and that's a fun thing for me because I just noticed that. And it's like these things come up to the surface, like in layers, you know, I just noticed that recently. And I was just like, oh, wow. And I was just in awe, you know, and it was funny because uh, uh, because the person responded with like, of course, I can do anything. I just like open up to doing anything and I just do anything um, and and I, I'm just like, and then I, and then I felt even more of a, you know, cause it's this sense that I can do anything, meaning like I have a choice in what I'm doing. Like, as in, I can just want to do something and do it, but it's like, as if I have a choice in what I'm doing, it's like everything that you do have a perception of doing, you don't do anything. Everything you do have a perception of doing isn't a choice. It's given you for your own expansion. You can say expansion, learning, awakening. Okay. It's giving you like that. So it's not like I decide what to do. And then I just channel the energies of the universe and fucking do them. It is not like that. And it's funny because the energy of it, it just kind of got me like, boom, I was almost like frozen. I was like, whoa, you know, because it was just like it was something that was uh, teaching me, you know, so that's what that's how I know. It's just like, oh, this is a learning experience. And I just like, uh, you know, kind of like feel a little bit discombobulated and, and you know, and, and just like alert and embracing the energy is like, whoa. And uh, it really clued me into, wow, that's a setup when you think that someone's capable of doing something and then the person plays off of that and gets all grandiose about it like yes of course i just like do whatever the fuck i want it's like no no one does what they want and from that perspective you are doing everything you want from a completely different perspective because that perspective is completely focused on you learning and expanding from your experience, not you getting what you want in your dream, okay? The body is not for getting what you want in a dream. That's the ego's use for it. See, that's how the ego uses the body. Let's see, this grandiose uh, kind of, I can just do whatever I want. Oh, oh gosh, that's such a setup. That's such a setup because that's not even true. Like from the ego's perspective, it's wishful thinking. It's total wishful thinking. I mean, if you're, you're, you're asking me, what does do whatever you want mean from the ego's perspective? You're like million bucks, right? <laughs> Oh, you can. Oh, you can. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, you can do whatever you want. Manifest the pony right here. Right. I mean, it, it's not it, it's it's not like that. And you're not trying to get to that. 
You want what you get. You want what you get. I mean, from, from the perspective that you really are and not with the ego's understanding, what you get is perfect for you. I told one friend uh, before, it just kind of like popped out of my mouth. You'll get what you want when you want what you got. Because you don't really know what you want. <laughs> It's revealed to you through wanting what you got and wanting what you got. All it entails is leaning in the direction. You know, you're going to learn that you want what you got. You're going to learn that you really want what you got. It's leaning in the direction of, I must have made a mistake. If I'm upset, I must have made a mistake about myself. Must be a mistake in my, my thinking. I must need a correction. I'm projecting this. Do you see where I'm going with this? It's just whatever it is that resonates perfectly with you, lean into that so you can see. Use everything for seeing. If you notice that anything less than gratitude is delusion, enjoy and then enjoy the delusion. Enjoy that sense. It's a powerful, it's a powerful, uh, potent feeling. You can learn a lot through it. Doesn't mean anything beyond that. You've probably heard your feelings are not facts. Don't use an upset feeling to convince yourself that you know what's happening. When we focus on something like, say you take something like money, okay? And we focus on it in a way like, okay, we need to, uh, we need to compartmentalize. We need to uh, keep it, we need to budget this much and do this much and uh, get all these numbers and look at them. And you look, you're looking at everything really closely. Even if you're not looking at anything that closely, say you just go, and uh, you look at your bank balance, okay? You go look at your bank balance. You are projecting your bank balance. There is no bank balance until you look at it. And every time you look at it and you believe that what you're looking at it is what it is, you're concretizing that thing, see? So it's like these things that get focused on now money is one of them. We've been taught so well to be hyper-focused on that, hyper-focused. Notice every time you go pay for something at the store, notice what's going on. Does it seem like you're losing something? <laughs> Does it seem like you're sacrificing something for something? This is not what's happening here. It's an emotional journey. It seems like you gave some money, you gave some dream money in a dream for some dream things. You didn't do it. You did not do it. That's the thing. It's like, there's a, such a guilty thing about it. It's like, oh, and, and now look, you got, you, you uh, got credit card debt. Oh no, uh, now you're in trouble. You know, it's like, or I don't want to get in trouble. I'm going to be in trouble. This is my worst nightmare. You know, it's like, this is this kind of intense, very intense, angry, fearful, victimized, shameful energy is wrapped around our whole perception of money. Okay. And I'm happy to be one of the ones who's obviously be, been chosen to break this spell. This is a spell. Okay. People getting arguments about it. Ridiculous. There's no, it's not, that's not the reason anyone's really in an argument. It's just using money as a reason, as a, uh, as justification for having an argument.
that sense like well, why don't i get better at this why don't i get uh why doesn't this ever get easier why don't i ever learn how to be good with money or something like that that's not that's what you're doing here who does this stuff matter to Look, the experience, the way the experiences are coming, it's just giving you opportunities to break the code. And they come over and over again to give you opportunities. You know, it's like there's this projection like, oh, my gosh, um, if I don't have money or start planning for not having money, if I don't have money down the, the road, I'll do it like this. If I'm poor, you know, there's like this imp impending, if I don't have it, you know, it's like right now you have everything you need to do what you came to do, which is all through observation. The money or lack of it that you seem to be experiencing is only for bringing about those feelings that need to be seen through. I mean, who knows? Once the upset feelings are seen through, maybe the money doesn't seem to be a problem anymore. I mean, how could it seem to be a problem anymore if there's no feelings to make it into a problem? Like it's always the underlying feeling. So we miss the point. We're often missing the point. Whenever we're having a conversation, we're having a conversation about the things on the surface, disregarding an energy play between us that's propping up an illusion that everyone in the world is playing into. So the way this works, you guys, is that consciousness is evolving. And you know, if you look at it from a biological perspective, which biology is not real at all, you can take it as symbolic though. You can definitely take it as symbolic. It could be showing things, okay? So, you know, biologically, it looks like it's a, it's a gene mutation, like these gene mutations happen happening, okay? And, and it's, it's kind of like, that's what's going on now is that it's not a gene because there's no such thing as a gene. You know, that's just one thing that you can use as a symbol, but it's an evolution of the way we think. So, there's a sprinkling of us, I don't know how many, um, that are kind of like bringing in, we have codes, whatever, mental codes, gene codes, whatever you want to say, um, to bring about a new way of looking at things, a new evolved way of seeing things. One of the new evolved way of seeing things is going to be that there is no uh, need to earn there's no, um, you're, there's, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Okay. Um, you, it, you don't, knowing that you're not capable of anything, um, leaning into, I'm not capable of doing anything, um, gets you to see what I mean when I'm saying you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do because anything that seems like you don't want to do, it's thinking that you don't want to do it. It's always thinking that you don't want to do it. So here's what people do. Here's how people screw themselves. They go, I have to do something I don't want to do so that I can do something that I do want to do. Okay. If you make it at, so this is for number one, making it as if you're capable of doing anything in the first place. Also, it's projecting the guilty thought you're not, you're not, uh, you're not deserving of doing what you want to do until you do what you don't want to do. You're not really deserving of doing what you don't, what you want to do until you do what you don't want to do. So this is setting up perception. This is setting up more perception and people start to feel more and more trapped in, I have to do what I don't want to do all the time. I'm always doing what I don't want to do. It's a perception. You are, it's given you to bust through it with your awareness. You're going to see right through it. So you're, uh, you're feeling upset whenever you feel trapped and you know, the next time you get a sense, like you're doing something you don't want to do. Pay attention. What does it feel like? Your, your willingness to embrace that feeling and notice that it's a pattern. It's a habit. When you just are willing to say, this is a habit. Hey, you can even say, I hope this is a habit. 
and it's not reality, right? That opens you up. That's enough to open you up if that's what you got. I hope this is a habit. I hope this is not my reality. I hope it's a habit. Let me see. I still use let me see. I love that one. The upset feeling comes. Let me see. I'm happy to have the upset feeling. I know what it's for. Aloha, Asana. Yay. <laughs> I love you. That reminds me of, of uh, pronunciations. So I was cruising around on, uh, I don't normally do this, uh, but I, you know, I don't normally do anything because I'm not capable of doing anything, but I got the perception of ah uh, i got the perception of i was like uh let's see what's going on on i think it was oh it was youtube it was on youtube okay let's see what's going on on youtube so i'm sitting on the couch and i'm giving myself a massage like i love to do um and which i'm not capable of doing but when i find myself doing it i'm like oh fuck yeah this is good um i got ah oh, flipping through some uh youtube so it has all new, newly uploaded things, all these newly uploaded things right on top. This is not something I'm super familiar with. So I'm, I'm like, just checking it out. Newly uploaded. Okay. What, what do I have? I got JP Sears. Um, oh, I got, uh, uh, well, what's his, what's that guy's name? The governor of Florida popping up. He's, he's done an interview. Um, so I'm like, oh, I watched that. It's like all serious. It's like a governor and he's in a battle with Disney and all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, that's really serious. Okay. Then I move over to the next thing. And then the next thing is this dude. And, um, he's, and this is where the pronunciation thing, thing came in. He pronounced it at, at Waita, at Waita Vedanta. I was like, whoa, I never heard it like that before. In case you guys don't know, a lot of people pronounce that Advaita <laughs> or Advaita or something like that. Uh, yeah, that Advaita uh, Vedanta. And he was dressed in an orange robe and he looked kind of funny. When Tony came downstairs and he saw the guy on the TV, um, he thought it was a comedy show. <laughs> I'm like, no, this dude's serious. He's like, he, he's a, he's teaching about something, um, and it was really interesting too. It was uh, about how this is all a dream, and you know, he was the way he was describing it was really interesting too. Everything is the way you described it. Everything is uh, Brahma, and which is the ultimate, right? Everything is the ultimate, and what you have a perception of. He used a cup. He had a cup um what you have a perception of or a table or anything a body whatever um that is uh, basically I, I think it's pronounced mighty or something m-a-y-d i maybe i'm not sure um but that is name and form like that that's what that is it's just name whatever you're getting a perception of that's name and form and that's the same thing as you know it's coming from your mind the way he said it it's your brain making an interpretation over reality um basically talking about the same kind of thing i i think uh i think that that particular line that uh teachings he pronounced it advaita vedanta um a d v a i t a is right along the same lines of what i'm talking about it's like the same kind of uh it's it's the same kind of thoughts and and teaching and you know what the way i look at it is that teaching of this world is it real is that this gentle whisper like hey tapping you on the shoulder because you know this thing gets stressful you know it's like hey like a really sweet loving tap on the shoulder and whisper hey this thing isn't real you know and it's that it's that one uh it's that one system of thought it's the system of thought that's given us while we're dreaming to bring us back to reality, right? You don't need a system of thought to tell you that you're dreaming when you're not dreaming. <laughs> it's the opposite. It's the answer to the thought system you made with the ego that's saying that this is reality. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh. Ah, oh, yay. Aloha. Oh, aloha, Brahma. Oh, 
I don't have the best service. Well, listen later. I love you. Oh, thank you. I love you. Thank you, Goda, you sweetie. Ah. Uh, So just see, just see if you're willing to kind of like dive deep um, beneath what, you know, with your awareness, beneath what seems to be on the surface. Um, it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, and I'm noticing that with this new awareness too, of holy shit, everything can just be overlooked, like more of an awareness of that um, as far as wow, I don't have to focus on anything that I don't want, you know, for instance, it, like I was talking about them masking cakies because my friend, Michelle Melendez, you know, she's so into getting the mask off the cakey. She's like, I can't help it. I'm like, I know you can't help it. And, you know, uh, thank you. And, you know, it's not, it's not so much, uh, thank you for getting the mask off the cakey because you're not doing anything. But thank you for your awareness. Thank you for your awareness. Thank you for leaning in the direction of these cakey are not in any trouble. There isn't any threat. Thank you for leaning in that direction. See, you don't have a choice in what you do. And as long as it's necessary for someone to be fighting for the children, there's going to be them popping up. You don't have to do it. And you don't have a choice in whether you get a perception of yourself doing it. So there's nothing to evaluate or uh, try to chew on in the mind about that. It's just like, it eliminates the need to think about what anyone should do or worry about how anything should get done. I mean, really, if you'll allow yourself to be relieved of concern and worry, that's helping the cakey, okay? there isn't any cakey it's actually helping yourself because you're getting a perception of cakey that need helping <laughs> you know and that's basically saying i need help and i don't know right now i don't know how to allow that help for me so i've got to play out some patterns it's okay it's not any like i said it's not anything wrong as long as there's a need for people to play out patterns there will be people playing out patterns in your perception and you'll apparently be one of them Aloha, Cynthia. Thank you so much. Yay. You don't have a choice in whether you do block therapy either. And, you know, apparently I find myself doing that stuff all day long. Right. And it's, and it's funny because from my point of view, I'm like, why the fuck would anyone like not do this? <laughs> Like, how could anything be more important once you realize, holy shit, I could just be releasing tension as much as I want? We don't have a choice in it. That's why. One friend asked me, uh, how do you reconcile carefree? Like as the Course in Miracles describes carefree, you have no care. You have no care about any, how anything goes. Completely carefree. And, you know, on top of that, care less. <laughs> so how do you reconcile that with self-care? Because, you know, block therapy, you know, it could be called self-care. It kind of goes in that category, right? It goes in that category in a big way. It's like a massage. It's like meditation. It's like, shit. It's good stuff. Um, but it's like no one has a choice when they go to that so knowing that you don't have a choice in your self-care that's it that's careless that's carefree that's it right there and now the, the two they don't reconcile together self-care and care less they actually don't reconcile you know why because self-care is an illusion <laughs> care less is your reality <laughs> Okay. So they're never going to reconcile. <laughs> but, you know, when you realize that this is 
not your reality. You can get a perception of yourself doing anything and it's not going to shake you. Because you're not you're you're not following the the mind into thoughts of evaluation. Why would you evaluate yourself if that's not reasonable to you? You're only going to find yourself in self-evaluation if that's reasonable to your mind. But you can say you're here to see that that is not reasonable and none of these thoughts that you made up have any value. Okay. Jesus said you cannot ride two horses. That means you cannot live. Uh, you're not living in two worlds at the same time. You're living in one or the other. Your mind is either serving the God of this world, which is the ego, or it's serving love, the God that's love. You know, you can call it something else. If you don't want to call it God, it doesn't matter. It's serving, your mind is serving one or the other. And when your mind is serving the true God, you don't have a care in the world. When your mind is serving the ego God, the God that you made up to prop you up as the center of this illusion that you made, <laughs> you hired him to prop you up and then you can call him God and prop you up as a center, but you'll pray to him when you want something healed on your body. <laughs> Sometimes he'll give it to you. Sometimes he won't. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, my heart goes out to some of my friends, you know, it's like there's some of my friends are going through it in this separate and, you know, worshiping the ego God. Like I'm saying in these churches, they're teaching you guys to worship the ego God. That's the ego God that you're praying to and asking him to take your cancer away. That's the ego God that you're praying to. Don't worry. You're, you know, your prayers get heard too. It's like the, you know, cause you have an intermediary. It's the Holy spirit. So when you're praying to that ego, God, the Holy spirit interprets your prayers and interprets your prayers, gives you not what you want or think you want. You're always getting what you want, but he's not the healing that you think you want, but the awareness that you need because that's really what you're praying for. That's why the Holy Spirit interprets it so that it can actually, you, it can be given to you. And it is given to you. The experiences just keep on coming. So um, notice some friends, uh, they've been religious their whole life. They've been uh, doing the church thing their whole life. In fact, they're high up in the church, right? They have followers and everything. And, um, there's a, there's now one of them has cancer. Apparently I don't believe in any of that shit. When I get the perception, someone has cancer. I don't think they actually have cancer. Uh, I think, oh, they're going to see through that. You know, even if they get, even if there's a perception of the body dying in this lifetime, I know that doesn't really occur and that's given them to see through. It's really interesting. All of these things that we get a perception of, we're given these things to see through. They're not really, there's no cancer. That's not a thing. So there's the, okay, pray, 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 get all these other people to pray for the cancer to go away. Okay. Um, now, like I said, there's not a problem in this because the prayers are interpreted so that everyone is getting what they really, really want, not knowing they're always getting what they want, but they're getting the expansion, what they need for the expansion of their awareness so they can see through these sicknesses that we project onto ourselves, like cancer. That is ridiculous. There's no such thing. And you know what the funny thing is? Uh, I, I told you guys I had the perception before of uh, someone saying, hey, is that, I think that's cancer. I had something like right here and I think that's cancer right there. I was like, oh, really? And, uh, and uh, put this thing on and yeah, if that's cancer, then it's going to do this. So, and then once it does that, the cancer's out. So it's like, oh, the cancer's out, the cancer's gone. Freaking awesome. 
and uh, oh, that was fun. Okay, I got the perception that I had cancer, and then it's gone. What fun, you know? Uh, and then, and, and then the next thing you know, so I'm like, oh, I'll try it over here. So then I try it over on my arm, and and then it seems like it's gone, and then it just like keeps on popping up. You probably see it a little bit. It's kind of like right there. So what do I use that for? I use it for uh, the same thing as everything else. It goes into the same bucket. You know, I don't have a choice in what I apparently do to it. Uh, oh, you know what I started doing to it? Apparently, though, block therapy. <laughs> it's so funny. It just occurred to me. Um, it just occurred to me that that thing needs some attention. It needs some uh, some attention. So what the habit is, what we tend to do is kind of like uh, leave it alone, maybe put in a little gentle ointment on it or maybe use something to suck it out or something like that. Um, and it just occurred to me, I was like, oh, that thing needs circulation. So I started pinching it like that <laughs> for a while and, and, and focusing on the breath. And it's pretty funny because it looks pretty good, <laughs> but you know, the, the purpose isn't to get rid of that. So that's the way I use it. The purpose isn't to get rid of it. And anytime I have a perception, like it flares up or something, uh, you know, I get a perception, it flares up. It might be painful, it might be itchy. It might be doing an itchy thing or something like that. I'm using that feeling for the same thing just over and over and over again. And, you know, and, and you get really fearful thoughts. Like the other day I got this uh, fearful thought that it was going to blow up like this big and be all, uh, all big and, 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 and crazy. And then I just like had like a deep loving breath with that and go, ah, oh, yes, that's perfect. Cause I know what it's for you guys. So I don't have to freak out. So the, 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 um, the trajectory is like freak out about it, but no, what I do is I relax around it. I relax around the oh, fearful sense. Something's going to happen. Something. Oh my gosh. What if it goes throughout my bloodstream goes to my heart, kills my ass. I'm like, who's caring about this? So, <laughs> And at the same time, I'm not trying to shut off any remedies or anything like that. I'm not resistant to anything. Um, as soon as um, I need to know what a uh, next remedy is, it just arises in my perception. I don't really have a choice in it. So I'm over there and I'm like, I'm working. You guys, I don't know if you guys know, but I've been um, working on the inside of my mouth. And like, if you guys want to know about block therapy, just let me know. I'll send you a link. Um, I've been using my fingers inside of my mouth to uh soften up my gums oh that feels so good just the i like in you know it's like i don't even give a shit if my gums ever get softer or the receding gum lines go away uh that's another thing i was like i was like oh oh gum therapy okay that sounds really good that sounds so much nicer than going to the dentist you see how these things just pop up so I get the perception. I got receding gum lines. I've been to the dentist before. They say you can't do shit for that anyways. Right. Um, so that's awesome. <laughs> I didn't even have to think about whether I wanted to do that or not, or have a, have an experience like that. They just don't have shit for it. Um, so I go, uh, oh yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll talk about that. Um, so, so this, this idea of, oh, an hour of meditating with my fingers in my mouth, pressing in my mouth, that just sounds so good to me. So I've been, um, doing that for like, I don't know, like maybe five weeks. Well, the receding gum lines aren't gone, but definitely everything is so much softer and the, uh, the, um, that everything's changed. I took a picture of the receding gums. You guys don't want to see that shit. That's gnarly. <laughs> that is gnarly. It looks like I ate Cheetos or something. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then I'll, and then I'll take another picture and see if like there's anything, but um, you know, the thing is, that's another thing. It's not for the receding gum lines to go away. That's why I'm like, I'm chill with these things. Uh, I'm just like, like kind of like playful and holding them in a, in a playful vibe. And, you know, when you're chill with things, you're not like, uh, uh, you're not like getting the perception that you're making these, this, these mistakes in using things that are harmful to you, like pharmaceutical type stuff. So the people that I'm talking about, like with the cancer and stuff like that, really, I'm not talking about anyone. I'm talking about my own mind. There's no one there. I know that. Um, it's just teaching. It's just to teach. It's for teaching, okay? Uh, blocking with hope. That's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so get the perception that okay, 
there's all this praying, 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 and get all these other people to pray and all this religious stuff. And then all of a sudden death is, is looming, right? There's this perception of cancer and um, they're getting the chemo. Now the chemo in their mind is uh, uh, God's, uh, God, I guess, uh, God's tool to heal them. So the chemo is their mind is God's tool to heal them, which, okay, awesome. Then the cancer is, I quote, the enemy. The beast, that's another, another term used. The enemy, the beast, there's a battle. There's this battle. So the story was that the chemo is working on the cancer. And since the chemo is working on the, ant, on the cancer, the beast, which is the cancer, took out the liver. That's the story, okay? Of course, from my perception, with my conditioning and understanding, which is not any more right than anyone else's conditioning and understanding, the chemo is taking out the liver, not the bucket, but really nothing has any effect on anything. Really, nothing has any effect on anything. We're making illusions. Now, the more we pray like this, the more we're gonna be given illusions that are for expanding our mind. These are really challenging illusions. Here's what I see for people who go down this kind of path. They end up in old age, very disillusioned with a strong sense of what the fuck. Okay. I saw that in my dad when he was going toward, you know, uh, nursing home, uh, induced coma, whatever. None of that stuff is really true. Uh, just the way it looks, it's not true. Um, but he, as he was going in that direction, there's this sense of dread and just being deceived, totally being deceived, you know, cause there's this, there's all this stake put into the Lord is going to do a thing. And the, and, you know, and you're going to see at that moment where you drop the body, you're going to see in the moment where you drop the body that you did all that to yourself. You did all, you did the cancer, you did the chemo, you did the, all that, you did it to yourself. It wasn't, it wasn't a battle between good and evil. It wasn't God and the beast battling for your life, for your body. It wasn't like that. It was you making a choice. So when you pray, here's how to pray to have a really effective prayer. Effective in that it opens your mind in that moment. You don't have to go through some crazy shit like that. And that's all. I mean, we've all, I'm not myself included. Shit, I just fell off a cliff two weeks ago. <laughs> I like to exaggerate. I like to dramatize, you know, five foot cliff, okay? I survived. <laughs> it's our stubbornness. And I was telling one friend, actually got in a, a conversation on Facebook because, you know, someone was talking about, uh, it was a man and he was talking about how um, these women in the, in the community that hold themselves up as if they're grand, as if they're better than everyone, they call themselves goddesses and they think that they don't have any work to do on themselves and they're just, you know, being assholes, basically. That's the message I got. This is my perception. <laughs> that guy could have a completely different story. Um, anyways, I go, well, you know, the thing about that anyone has any work to do on themselves is a fucking lie in the first place. It's a lie. And so those women who are propping themselves up as more grand than everyone, you know, uh, they think they have to compensate because they think that there's this imaginary work that they have to do on themselves. So they're compensating by pretending like they did the imaginary work already ahead of, ahead of you guys, ahead of everyone else. They're holding themselves up. They're propping themselves up. Okay. There's no work to do. Remember, the action is in the observation. What work would you have to do on yourself? What work? 
that is a, that's a guilty thought. That's just a guilty thought. So I said, Hey, you know, if there's women popping up in my view who are having to compensate for the belief that they're, that they had work to do on themselves and they already did it. And I'm going to remind them who they are. I'm going to remind them of their grandeur. You know how I do that? I look at them in a certain way because <laughs> the action is all in the observation. <laughs> I see their grandeur through the grandiose image that they're presenting. I see their grandeur. Like, there is no work to do on yourself. You're perfect. That's, a, you know, that's my MO to everyone. <laughs> And especially if I get triggered by them, geez. <laughs> especially if I'm, I'm triggered enough to make a Facebook post talking about their asses. <laughs> so then um, I get a religious person comes on. I don't know if religious person is the right way to say, it. you know, it just doesn't really mean anything. Words, the person's all into Jesus Christ and being saved and everything like that. And she just can't believe that I just said that no one needs to work on themselves. And, you know, there's a whole spiel about how we're sinners and Jesus Christ and all this stuff and how we all need to be redeemed. That was the one that got me that we all need to be redeemed. And I was like, ah, yeah, we all need to be redeemed by you. We need you to redeem us. You, you need to redeem us because <laughs> it's in your mind that we're unredeemed. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, I let her know as soon as you redeem them, you'll realize that you are already redeemed. Like in the, in the eyes of the Lord, you're never unredeemed. That's, that's why you have no work to do on yourself. All you need to do is see with the same sight as the Lord. <laughs> Align your sight with the Lord, basically. Because, you know, it's like a, in, in truth, nothing's ever happened. So if nothing's ever happened, innocence remains. Okay, Kay wants me to talk about this. And I wanted to talk about this to you guys too. I didn't, I forgot about it this whole time. I was so excited about it. It was so wonderful. Blocking with hope. Uh, okay, so we're going to start a new YouTube channel. I know I just put stuff all over the place. A lot of the stuff I just like, uh, uh, and, and I love this about myself. I know I'm not actually doing anything. That's why I can love this about myself. Most people can't love this kind of stuff about themselves. You know, I'll just find myself erecting a YouTube channel. Maybe it'll do something. Maybe it won't. I have like 10 website names. I'm using two of them. Uh, I started, I start different things. I stop them. I, you know, I love that about myself. That's my broad. That's my broad. She does, she, she fucks around. She meanders, she plays, she tests shit out. She has to try new things out all the time. That's what I see. <laughs> and, you know, it's just fun. You don't need to hate on that. There's no need to hate on that. And, you know, everything I do, I do for you. Um, and, and the way I do it for you, the way I do it for you is you are me and everything I do, I do for all of us. There's one of us all of us. Okay. And the perception, it's all of us. So anyways, I get segued so easily, huh? I know how to rant. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> blocking with hope. That's the, uh, I think that's going to be the title. Okay. I just put that out there. Blocking with hope. Well, it, the way it came about, my mom uh, is into blocking and she can't do too much blocking, uh, according to her story. Um, it's complicated. Maybe. I don't know. I, I, uh, uh, she has, she, she's got what she needs. She's got the block. She's got the thing. She thinks she's super busy. And, you know, I've been working on that with her for years. It's really fun. <laughs> uh, there's some stubbornness going on with that one. Do you think you're really busy? Right. So yeah, we just gently hold it and stuff like that. Anyways. Um, my mom was saying, she goes, she started watching the uh, block therapy videos and she goes, oh my God, that woman reminds me of you. She reminds me of you. She's like, 
I want you to do the block therapy. I want you to show me the block therapy. And, um, and I go, okay, well, um, cool. That sounds fun. And then it occurred to me, oh my gosh, what if we, is she wants me to be, she told me she does, doesn't just want me to teach her. She wants it to be on YouTube where she can access it anytime she wants. So um, I said, okay, well, you want to do it with me? Um, we can go on Zoom. Just like we go on Zoom for Wisdom Dialogues, we can go on Zoom for blocking. And, you know, I could do different things too. It might not be called, end up being called blocking. So there's a lot of things I could show my mom and anyone else who wants to watch. Things you can do with your hands. So that's really fun. And it's all about releasing tension, basically releasing tension and meditation, which is just my favorite. So um, that's probably going to go up on YouTube and um if my daughter, Akea, wants to do any Zooms with me, I'd be happy to do some Zooms with her too. And anyone else who wants to do it with me, like you can, if you want to go, hey, you know, I want to go on one of your Zoom, uh, whatever I end up calling it. Um, this is what I want to work on. I got a pain over here. Let's go over here and do this. Let me know. I love that shit. I love, I love it. I will give you a caveat. You may or may not come out feeling better. Okay, but because you might stir some shit up, you might open up a can of worms. There's no body. Oh, I love you. Oh, oh you want to work on everything with me? Thank you. I want to work on everything with you too. <laughs> Good thing we have really no work to do, so we could just be playful, huh? <laughs> oh, so fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know there you could um open up to a new like a layer of tension in your mind it's always in your mind it doesn't matter um you're you can perceive your body you're getting a sense of a body okay the sense that you're getting of your mind is thinking right you're getting that sense of your mind but you can perceive your body as a sense when you're perceiving as a body as a scent that's still your mind um but it's a projection of the patterns that you've accumulated in the mind and how that feels that's really awesome uh, the patterns that you've ac accumulated in your mind are what you feel through your body sense okay there's you guys this, this tension this tension that that's that i'm touching upon right now it's always been there it's always been being felt Okay, all of this stuff is felt by consciousness constantly. We just become unaware of it. We compartmentalize it. We block it off so we can focus on other things. We're not perceiving everything. I'm sure you've, uh, I'm sure you've heard that. You're, you're not perceiving everything. You're not perceiving all of the pain. You're perceiving all of the pain at once. You'd probably blow up. I don't know, but it would be something weird. <laughs> Maybe you just like, uh, no, you can't do that. <laughs> it would probably be super intense though. Um, there's, there's way more pain than we can perceive. So we're going in and kind of seeking a little bit of pain at a time. And when, when we're using our breath and attention like that, it's not even get you're not even getting a, the perception of it as pain. It's more like a pleasurable kind of relief. Yeah, it can feel a little bit intense, but if it's more intense than you want, you just back off, like you know. Uh, and 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 yeah, the backing off, even you don't have a choice in it. Watch this; it's really awesome. It's really awesome because we have conditioning. I got to see so much of that through yoga. You know, and I keep on hearing my yoga teacher say over and over again, "Be." humble and back off when you need to back off and you're going how do i know when i need to back off how do i know when it's too much you know how do i know and 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 it's like you you learn you learn through that and it shows you it, it shows you everything like how do i know when i'm pushing too hard you get to see there's not anything i can really explain to you but you can see you can notice the sense in your energy field when you're pushing beyond what's needed and in that that's attacking yourself even working out so you know i've been looking at for so long this sense of being sore after working out i know you can't get sore from working out you can't you it's is it a coincidence that you get sore after working out no it's not a coincidence it's a projection 
It's a projection. You're projecting that so you could have justification for having a sore body. A sore body is an effect of an attack. It's not caused by what you think. It is not caused by working out. You can't help doing that hard workout so you can manifest that kind of attack. And you think you need it. And you think you need it. It's not necessary. No pain, no gain. You know that one? It's not true. We made that one up. And the reason why it's a saying is because it is a deeply ingrained pattern. Christine, aloha. Yay. It's a deeply ingrained pattern. So to lift patterns only takes awareness of the feeling of pattern. It's that simple. And it's really difficult for an ego. It's impossible for an ego. You're not an ego. The ego is propped up as your God, though, whenever you're identifying with the world. That's your God. If a, if a cancer is seen as threatening for you, the ego is your God. If anything seems to be a problem for you, the ego is your God. In that moment, that's the master you are choosing. No, you can't uh, um, believe that you have to live out a 3D existence and also be thinking with the true God. If you believe that you have to live out a 3D existence, you are thinking according to what the ego wants you to believe. There is no 3D existence to live out. You're getting a perception of a 3D existence. You pop out of that as soon as you're willing to see beneath it, to look beneath it. There is no, no, it's not, it's not the truth and this reality you made up. It's or, it's one or the other. One of them's real to you at a time. <laughs> Only one. Okay, Aloha Hope, I'm coming back home to Pahoa. Oh, I can feel our hug right now. I'm so happy to hear that. Yay. I am going to say, oh, Coco Wassies, how sweet. All right. I love it. Let's see, Margaret, I really thought I had a choice of my pattern. Then, holy smoke, <laughs> bloom ego. Oh, but I don't know what you said there, but I, I get it. I feel it. I feel it. I'm so with you while being completely lost. Perfect. See, that's the thing. Look at this. I am with you. I am with you. One of my friends was telling me this weekend, oh, she gave me such a good teaching. She wasn't even trying. Uh, she just uh, gave me such a good teaching. She started talking about this conversation she was having with her inner child. Bob Shine isn't on here right now, but Bob Shine, uh, I'm going to relay this to him because he always asked me about the inner child. And I'm like, the, pot, the past didn't fucking happen. Forget about the inner child from back then. The inner child now. About now, 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 this inner child. My friend was relaying to me about how the inner child, her inner child, all of a sudden popped up in her awareness. Like she wasn't looking for her inner child or anything. Just propped up in, in her awareness and said, is it okay? Is this okay? And, uh, and my friend goes, it's okay. I am with you. See, that's you. That's you. You could say it's the Holy Spirit. You could say it's God. You could say whatever you want. That's your true voice. You're the same there's no only, there's only one being. The other voice that's scared is not you. That's what you can call your inner child if you want. It's the structure of thought you made with the ego to be afraid and to express fear. 
You're like the parent. You're like the parent to that child. So it's like, my friend fucking got, oh, I just love to see this. My friend's freaking enlightened, man. Just, you know, just seeing that, wow. Just to feel the energy of that and the sense of freedom in that. And, and that, and, uh, you know, she said there was just comfort immediately. It's okay. I'm here. I've got this. All you, you know what she said? So beautiful. All you have to do is sit there and be beautiful. Just sit there and be beautiful. Sit in the violet light and be beautiful. That's your real voice. That's you. So it's like, I am here. I am here. And any other structure of thought that pops up, meaning people, places, things, tables, cups, whatever. Any other thing that pops up in the perception, also reflecting structure of thought you made with the ego. So that's why I am here. I am with you. It has nothing to do with the body. It's not limited. That's your voice. And you know it's your voice. You have to go looking outside yourself for it. You're the great comfort. You're the second coming of Christ. Keep choosing the truth. Again, a friend asked me, how do I get completely established in the truth? Keep choosing it. Even when it seems like you're not choosing it. You're identified as this inner child thought structure. You're right. All of a sudden you're identified as it. When you're identified as it, you're suffering as that thing. You're not that thing. You're kind of like its parent. I am with you. It's okay. Give, it, give the comfort to receive the comfort. Now, you may not be able to say, I am with you and mean it like that. Extend it to your friends, extend it to your family members whenever they seem to be upset or they seem to be worried or they seem to be concerned. Don't spark their concern up with them. You know, a lot of the times you help your friends out just by not saying a thing. And you know, the more you don't have a choice in what you say, once again, don't start thinking, oh, I'm just not going to say shit. Notice in the note, because it is, the, it is in the observation. But when you notice how powerful it is to not say something, when you are agreeing with an illusion, just to refrain from adding into that energy. Oh yeah, that's really shitty. Just like to agree with some, oh yeah, that's a really shitty. You know, you could agree with someone without agreeing that there's anything in the perception that's threatening. Oh, I see how that could seem really upsetting. It seems like you're upset. Is there anything I can do? You don't know how those words are going to come out, but it's through your observation that you're going to be able to see what's really true. And you're going to be able to know, like I was talking about earlier, I know when something delusional comes out my mouth, I don't beat myself up about it. I stop. I'll, I'll just, I can't focus on anything else. Oh, I just like, well, embrace that. And then, and then, and then I'll move on. The stopping doesn't last long. If I do have to stop physically in, I, I don't have a choice in it, but if I do find myself stopping physically, it's not longer than a few seconds. So I can embrace the feeling and the teachings come. Hugs all the way around. Yeah. Yeah. You're never, you're never really lost. You get the perception that you're lost. You know why you're never really lost? Because you can pop out of being lost in a second. It's just a choice. It's not like you have to go back the same way you came, you know, because getting lost has to do with 
uh, accumulating or pursuing thought structures, thought patterns down a road, right? It's kind of like you're traveling down a road. You're not going anywhere, but you're just accumulating thoughts. Well, you don't have to go back the same way. <laughs> you just pop right out of it. Instant ascension. <laughs> if you'll accept it, instant ascension. The reason people get caught up in their emotions is because they take the emotions to be a factual thing. Like that means something and now I have to do something different. I have to change my plans. I have to start relating with these people different. Now I start to have to start protecting something over here, right? But no, you can just be carefree about everything. You know, when I get caught up and I had a sense of getting caught up yesterday, it was really fun. I got the perception that someone was reacting to me. Um, excuse me. I feel like I'm going to sneeze. That feels awesome, but I'm not sneezing. <laughs> I got the perception that someone was disgusted with me, just like oh, someone close to me too. I was like, Ugh. and I'm like, whoa. I was like, oh, big. Um, and you know, there's a reaction. I noticed that I noticed what I'm projecting to make myself get that perception to make myself make that look, to make myself get that perception from that person. And I all of a sudden started crying. And you guys, I haven't, I actually have cried twice since the last time I did, did wisdom dialogues, I think. And I didn't cry for years before that. So it was really interesting. At one point I just like felt really stressed. I'm, oh, I wanna cry. And I just cried. Um, and then this other time I just saw what I'm projecting and what it, and what kind of feeling I'm having. And I just started crying and, you know, it's like, and it, and it felt great. And then after that, it's gone. I'm laughing. I'm having fun. It's not like something's wrong with you or anything like that. These things just come and they pass, you know, um, I was just saying, and it's so funny because when I say stuff like this, a lot of the times it'll come to pass. Yeah. I haven't really cried in two years. I just haven't pursued a thought that leads to tears, you know? Um, and so that, then I had the opportunity like twice. First time it was kind of mild, you know, it was just like a little one. Oh, that's nice. The second time it was like a good one, a big one. And then there was like, and then there's some really big laughter after that and nothing needs to change. There's nothing that needs to change. There's things that I notice. There's certain energies that I just cannot do anymore. Definitely notice that. It's like, it's, I, and it's not a choice. It's not a choice that I'm making. I'm not going to do that energy anymore. No, it's, I'm just noticing I can't even go there. My mind can't go there. My mind can't go into that kind of play. And I'm happy about that, you know? And it was kind of like this um, sadness over um, what illusion I made for myself in relating with people, you know? So it's like, and, it, and when it's, when it's revealed to me, as soon as it's revealed to me, it's like, ah, oh, thank goodness. It's like another layer released. And that's all there is. That's all that's going on. Another layer released. Like whatever this uh, energy play that I've been doing, I know it's kind of like I made an agreement with you, like I've to play this energy out. And we've been playing this energy out for decades. And um, now I can't do that anymore. It, it's just goes like that and you know the things that things pop up and uh it doesn't have to be I, i've definitely had huge openings without crying i have noticed that any kind of crying type situation is like definitely for a huge opening okay so that's always what it's for and uh, you know the the goal is to see completely through the world so one, one trap that people fall into is thinking that they made it as far as spiritually. They're there. You're not there. You, you, you don't have anything to improve yourself, but there's a problem with your sight. If you're getting the perception of this world, there's an issue. <laughs> 
there's an issue with your vision, it needs correction. <laughs> That's all. That's all. Best feeling, get it. I am with that. My brother who had MD, MD, MD. I don't know what MD is. Used to sneeze 10 times a day for what he says was his well being. Oh, maybe the brother who is an MD. Things come out weird. I know. Common, give me space. I need to sneeze. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> what fun. Thank you. <laughs> oh, she's saying the sneeze is the best feeling. When you, when, when you, uh, yeah, either way, whether it comes out or it stays in, it's an interesting, it's an, it's an interesting, fun feeling. Yeah. And, and these are the kinds of things we're given to enjoy, like sensation. Sensation is for enjoyment. Let's say like that. Sensation is for enjoyment. And when the sensation doesn't seem to be joyful, that's when you know a correction is needed because you're meant to be in joy. You're as, you're, all of your sensations are meant to be enjoyed by you, okay? Um, you get a different perception because of being afraid, but that fear is also to be resolved through it. <laughs> ah. there's no savior in the world no one's coming to save you i got plenty of friends who think that trump is coming to save them some of them send me videos about trump trump it's so fun i love receiving those videos I always put a heart on them you know I don't try to correct anyone. If they want to have a savior right now, that's cool. If they want to ask me, if they want to come up to me and ask me, hey, Hope, what do you think about my savior, Donald Trump? I'll be like, I think you're barking up the stupid tree with that one. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't matter who it is. You can put it on anyone, put it on Jesus. Put it on Jesus, make him the savior, okay? He doesn't wanna be your savior, he's your brother. He's trying to give you some uh, guidance all the time, okay? No human is, uh, no human, uh, there's not really humans. Um, creations, let's say creations. We perceive them as humans. Uh, there's no creation is, uh, is, it's not like, it's not like they're not worthy of your awe, but it's misplaced. If you're in awe of another creation, that's misplaced. Because you're the same as all creation. Okay. So it's like Jesus Christ putting him up on a pedestal. Um, the way Jesus would want you to see it. Yes. I have a direct connection with the fucker. Okay. <laughs> he, feel, he fucking told me. <laughs> What he wants you to see is that you have never sinned. He's your brother. He's trying to show you that you've never sinned. That's the only thing he wants you to see. You've never separated, never sinned. There's nothing to be redeemed about yourself. Okay, that's what he wants you to see that. Um, when you call him a God and worship him and stuff like that, um, you know, he waits for you. There's not a lot, there's not a lot he can do with that because you're making a separation between him and you. It's hard to hear from him if you're making a separation between him and you. And if anything that you think you hear from Jesus has to do with you or someone else being sinful, that is not Jesus. That's the ego. Okay. That's not Jesus. Whatever you think Jesus is, that's the ego. If anything in the world seems to be a threat, that's not Jesus. That's the ego. Jesus would tell you that, that you're dreaming. There's nothing here threatening you. You wanted to see it as a threat. You wanted to see it that way. Look, we share the same mind with Jesus. We share the same mind. We have, we're, we have access to the same thought system as Jesus. He loves you, and that's why 
Uh, and that's why you hear, you can hear from him if you're not making a separation from him. Yes, creation, creations communicate with one another in case you had a question about that. Creations communicate. That's all they do. They communicate. That's all they do. And they love it. Communication is creation. It, we're, we're creating through communication. That's what co-creation is. It's through communication. But true communication doesn't deny the truth. That's not communication. That's projection. Wherever you're bringing sin into the equation, that's projection. The sense like you need people to be brought to justice. Look, there's players on this apparent world stage that seem to be guilty of doing something to people like crimes against humanity, okay? And the, and the trajectory is, or the, um, the temptation of the ego is to want to see them brought to justice. Now, the ego's idea of justice has to do with guilt and punishment. All that could be is about you. If you pursue those thoughts, that's about you. Because, you know, it's not really about you. But in your dream, you make it about you. And you, pro you project onto yourself and you attack your own body with those thoughts. So whenever I get the sense that I'd like to see someone brought to the ego's justice, I get a load of the feeling effect. That's the thought. That's the thought. That's the attack thought right there. The feeling effect. Whenever I want to see someone else, you put yourself in their shoes as the one being receiving your punishment. Notice how that feels. You know, I can't tell people uh, just to just feel how you feel. I do tell them that. But there's some people and a lot of people who go, when I think about someone that I don't like being hung by their toenails, it makes me feel really good. Okay, then put yourself in their shoes. You're getting the punishment that you want for them. You're the one getting the judgment because that's really what's going on. When, you're, when you seem to be launching an attack about someone else, even if you think it makes you feel better because there's some ego gratification in that for people. It, it's attacking yourself, it's hurting. That hurts you. That's the only reason I tell you about it. So you can see, oh, I'm doing that to myself. So for me, when I get the sense that I would like to see someone hung by their toenails, for instance, I notice that it's an attack on myself and I let myself see them forgiven, completely redeemed. Because that's how they are. They're not doing anything. If I will just ask to see them as completely redeemed, it's given me, okay? Uh, yes, I've seen all your players redeemed, completely redeemed. Not punished, redeemed. That's what you want for them. You want them redeemed. All those big players, I'm not even gonna start mentioning any names. You know who they are. Anyone in your mind that seems to be in need of punishment. See them in their glory. See them as a, as, as a child being told that they never did any of those things and it's okay and no one suffered. See them being given a crown in heaven, if that's what kind of vision stokes you, right? Whatever it is, you know, what, what you would want for yourself extend that to the ones that seem to be your enemies there's jesus again saying love your enemies you don't have any enemies you get the perception of having enemies that's great good that's what gives you the opportunity to heal what's projecting that
something uh, definitely got, find my mind, found my mind going to this one thought over and over again. I was like, wow, as soon as I, th I saw that, I was like, okay, that's going to be turning around in my mind a few times. <laughs> one friend, young girl posted, apparently she's a lesbian. I didn't know, um, found out. Uh, all I did was read her Facebook post, was amazing. Um, apparently some uh, guy decided that he wanted to have sex with her and her lesbian girlfriend. So he wrote her a big long post about how, you know, he was like really good in bed and he can get in their threesome and they can do all this stuff. So she takes the post and she puts it on Facebook, right? So I'm like scrolling down Facebook, this thing all of a sudden, I'm reading this thing. I'm like, huh, what the? F and I'm feeling the sense like wanting to make someone guilty. Also, the sense like uh, shame, remorse, guilt. It's like, woo, -hoo -hoo, big energies, which I love. You know, I know. And, and uh, it doesn't matter what I seem to be looking at um, um, when I get the perception of a big energy like that. It's always for the exact same thing. Okay, I know what it's for. It's always for the exact same thing. So it's like interesting things. It's like uh, uh, it's like the perception, like vision, pictures, visuals, like just like and, and you know it'll come up for me, and I'm just kind of like, oh, interesting. You know, it'll just come up. I'll be like, oh, interesting. And even if I got caught up in in, in it for a minute, doesn't matter to me. Oh, interesting. It's just a matter of watching and allowing. And what I see is that every time it comes back, it's for another he healing. So it's like this, this whole um, energy is given to me where it's like, wow, this is like a really delusional play right here. It's as if we can help something by uh, shaming this person publicly. Okay. There's all kinds of different things going on here. All kinds of little uh, energies and patterns and stuff like that. So, you know, it's such, it's, it's so, it's so big and it's a lot of, it's a lot of energy, you know, and, and for me, I'm like stopping and I'm embracing the energy and I'm, cause I'm noticing it's all an emotional journey. And I'm also noticing for people when they're seeing something like this and maybe they're scrolling a lot and they're seeing a lot of different stories and stuff like this, guys, we get triggered and our mind starts going, going, going. And the more of this we do without recognizing, we're just talking to ourselves and believing our stories all fucking day long. Okay. Um, so, so when it comes up for me, I'm just eliminating the attachment to the story in the mind. Every time, uh, you know, this, the story, like I'm like getting sexual images coming to me, you know, just from, it's like, it, it's like this, something stimulating, something stimulated, you know, all of a sudden. Um, and it's just like, it pops up and there's making it meaningless. It pops up, making it meaningless again and again. It's not what you seem to think is not about you, okay? It's only projected to get a reaction. So, you know, if I'm, if I'm over there evaluating myself, I'm gonna be like, why am I getting sexual images? I shouldn't be getting sexual images. Then it's going to make a big, and, and you know what, you know what happens for people? They deny that they're even given that perception. They'll like cover up some fear over it and just deny it. Don't deny it. The eyes wide open. This is the first step. This is the perception. Oh, there's a perception. It's just a perception. It, you know, this will, th this will prevent you from getting weird or freaking, you know, like uh, creepy or anything like that. If you will see what's being shown to you and then it's not automatically pursued. Okay. And then, uh, and then covering it up with some guilt and shame for it having a, a, a rose for you. Okay. So what I see is when we're getting these perceptions, all day long, we're getting distracted all day long. So I knew that this thing, as soon as I saw it, because it was just like this intense energy. I'm not, I'm, I don't even know what I'm looking at. It's, it's all in my mind. There's not, not even anyone outside of myself doing this thing. I'm getting an intense energy. I know right away, um, if I'm reading something, I get, I'm getting an intense energy. It's going to be trying to hook me, which is good because I like it. 
because that's how I unhook everyone. There's only one of us. That's how I'm unhooking everyone from these things even being meaningful, feeling bad for the guy for being outed. I mean, it's just like on and on. Releasing hooks, releasing hooks. That's something we say in block therapy too, because it's like uh, the, the manifestation of this, the, the manifestation of these hooks in the mind is hooks in terms of uh, glue. It's like these gluey, where the cells stick together and it makes a little, it'll hook to the bone and make a little hook. It's almost like a little knob. And it keeps on making another one and another one and another one until it gets to be this thick stuff. And, um, and it gets, it, it get, the hooks get eliminated. Everything gets soft enough and like eliminate and go back into the system from gentle, gently connecting with it, gently connecting with it, with the, to, to it, with the block or with the hand, you know, I'm always talking about the pain and everything like that, but it's actually gentle. You're just touching on it. There's touching on it. And, you know, really the gentler you are with it, the more you can see that the pain isn't pain. It's more like a, a release, it's more like a ah, releasing tension. I have a link for that. I'll send it out. I'll send it out to you guys. Um, or I'll put it in the chat or something. I got on that thing and got a link. I got my own link for it um, so that when people sign up, I actually get 15%. So anyone can do that. And if anyone wants to sign up, um, like, you know, I just, I just signed up because I was like, I naturally tell people about this. People naturally like want to buy this stuff. Um, and then you also can all can be a, an affiliate and get 15%, like any straight, any sale that anyone sells off of you. So um, if you want to do something like that, let me know. Um, I'm probably, I don't know. A lot of the times I have ideas and it doesn't even manifest, which I love about myself again. Um, but who knows? I could be um, doing some kind of YouTube thing um, with helping people to release tension, both with their hands and with blocks. Isn't that so fun? And then we'll probably throw some wisdom in there. I don't think I can help that. <laughs> Oh, you found that? Yeah. Oh, and lose weight in inches is on there. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. That's the thing. It's like, um, you guys probably know, I don't really uh, think of myself as someone who needs to lose weight or inches. Um, but a lot of people who try this stuff out, they'll try it out because they have some pain somewhere and they'll end up trying it out and go, Oh, I like this. And they'll start doing it all over their body. And then they'll realize, Holy shit. Uh, I'm losing weight or I lost some people are just like, I lost weight and people with like flabby stuff hanging down. All of a sudden it's like tightening up. And you know, the thing is, the thing is about that body is a projection. Remember that. Remember that the body is a projection. That means aging is a projection. Okay. So we're, we're just using something like our hand or a block or whatever to reveal to ourselves. What's true. What's true is we can relax a little bit more because there's all this tension popping up. And basically you're just like uh, putting awareness on the tension and saying, you can relax that. <laughs> and when you're putting awareness on tension like that, the tension is really being held mentally. And you know, you're allowing the release, the release is a mental release. Now um, it has to be approached over and over again because of the patterns that we've set up. The mentally releasing needs to be approached over and over again. No, you do not need block therapy. You do not need anything. Um, and there's many ways. I know you. I know you know. And if it resonates with you, hey, it's really fun. I love the way my cedar wood one smells, and I know how to get cedar wood ones, which they're not available online. But uh, yeah. So, if anyone has any questions, raise your hand. You're on it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're on it, Constance. Okay, you're you're actually doing the block. Nice. I love it. Yeah, let's do some uh, Zoom block therapies. Yeah. Just let me know. I'll hook it up with you guys. We'll have a, a booming YouTube channel full of block therapy stuff for anyone who wants to see what I mean. They can just like have a workout with me. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's funny. I call it a workout. <laughs> I don't know what that word even means anymore. <laughs> uh, 
All right, I think we're complete unless I see a hand or someone wants to ask me a question. Or if Anne has, Anne, anything coming up for you? Hooray. Okay, um, hopejohnson.org, it was down. I didn't, I don't know how long it was down. Someone asked me where it was. I contacted my web dude, it's back up. Okay, and I think it's even like going faster. I got better service on it. Um, hopejohnson.org is where you find my videos and my audios and you can buy my book there and you can leave me a donation there. Um, and you can sign up for my newsletter, which I haven't given you guys a newsletter in I don't know how long probably like a year and a half. And I love that about myself. Once again, <laughs> I thought I was going to be writing to you guys on a newsletter recent. No, nope, but, uh, or more frequently. No, nope, not, not that I've seen so far, but you never know what can happen. And I've got you on a list. So <laughs> let's say you can never know what we're going to dream about happening because nothing happens. Um, and apparently I have you on a list. <laughs> Oh, mahalo. I love you guys so much. I'll be back next week. And of course, on Fridays at Hawaiian Sanctuary. It's really a blast. I uh, hope you can make it if you're nearby. Christine, I'm going to see you soon. I'm so excited. Maybe you'll even come in person. That'd be really fun. All right. Mahalo. Aloha. Ahui ho.